I am Rolf Hutt from Delft University of Technology, and this is the video abstract with the article Medicinal Footprint of the Population of the Rhine Basin. In this research, we linked the pollution of specific pharmaceuticals in River Rhine to specific demographic groups that contributed most to these pollutions. To do that, we used commonly available online data sources, such as population data from Eurostat, such as a digital elevation model from Hydrosheds, and discharge data that is available from the authorities along the River Rhine. We combined that with measurements on water quality that we took ourselves. We took those measurements when we were driving back on our way from the EGU General Assembly, and we stopped with our little van about every 30 kilometers along the Rhine. Every time at either a bridge or at a ferry, we took a sample. That sample was then cooled with fresh alpine snow, stored and brought to a laboratory in the Netherlands, where it was analyzed for these 40 chemicals. For 20 of those 40 chemicals, we found a significant relationship between the most contributing demographic group and the pollution. For example, carbamazepine, shown here, has a very high correlation between the measurements we took, the blue dots, and the best fit from our model that uses number of male elderly as an input. The R square here is higher than 0.98. 20 of those chemicals had a significant relationship, and in, these, and in this table, those are sorted by different demographic groups. Of course, it has to be stressed that these are correlations and not per se causations. For example, oxazepam, a sleep-inducing drug, is not normally prescribed to female kids. However, in areas with a lot of female kids, apparently more oxazepam is consumed. Of course, we can also learn something from the 20 chemicals that did not have a significant relationship with demographics. It means that humans are most likely not the main cause of pollution in the river of that chemical. For example, here we show diazepam, and somewhere after the city of Basel, before the city of Strasbourg, we see a spike in our measurements and then a slow decline, as if there was a point source pollution there. If we only test for different demographic explanations, we would conclude that the French would be the main cause of diazepam in River Rhine. However, this model only has a 0.36 R-square, which would lead us to believe that humans are not the main cause of diazepam pollution in River Rhine. So using the logic of watersheds, we could explain how different demographic groups are responsible for different pharmaceuticals in River Rhine. That's very important to us, since we need to know what is the cause of the pollution of a major river that in the end is a major source for drinking water in the Netherlands. And of course, this was the best fieldwork ever. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please email us, and I hope you enjoy reading our article.